Can we cut dovetails on the scroll saw? Sure we can. I learned a new technique and tonight I'm going to show you. One of the telltales of quality craftsmanship in woodworking is the dovetail. Uh, it's a joint that's been around for actually thousands of years and it's a very strong joint which is one of the reasons it became so popular but over the years the look of the dovetail has become synonymous with quality woodworking uh, so can we cut the dovetail on the scroll saw we can it's uh, like any other hand cut dovetail it takes a little practice uh, but I recently learned a new technique from a fellow online YouTuber uh, by the name of Memphis Applegate. And uh, I think his technique is by far the easiest. I've been practicing a little bit and I want to show you how it's done. Here's a sample that I just did uh, as I was practicing a little bit. And I think you'll see that we actually have a fairly accurate joint here. It goes together. Uh, a little bit loose, but not too bad. And with a little more practice, I think I can even tighten it up more than that. Uh, but it's a pretty good joint. And I think you can see with just a little flush sanding, which you always have to do even with hand cut dovetails, uh, pretty nice joint. So let's go over the workbench and I'll show you this technique. To accomplish these dovetails, you don't need a whole lot. You don't need a pattern or anything. Uh, basically, you need a good square. Uh, we need the wood we're going to use. In this case, I'm going to make the pin on this piece and the tail on this piece and a good sharp marking knife. Uh, the first thing we have to do is we need to draw a line uh, across this pin board that's exactly the width of the tail board. Uh, so basically what we do is we just take the piece of wood, put it up, well, let's do it this way, make it actually easier. Put it up against it and we're going to use a fine sharp pencil to draw a line across this board. Okay, so you can see as we pull it apart, we actually have a piece right here that's exactly the width of this board right here, assuming we cut just inside that line we drew, because obviously the line is a little above the board. The next thing we have to do is mark uh, on the pin board, and we'll set the tail board aside for right now. We have to mark on the pin board uh, two 90 degree lines away from this line where each side of the dovetail is going to be. Now I'm going to just uh, throw this on here in a random location because it doesn't matter. Usually you're going to be using wider boards and you'll be cutting two, three, four dovetails. Uh, so the way to do this to get a nice 90 degree line is just go ahead and set up your square and I'm going to come in here and make a couple marks. We'll say right about and we're going to go from that line to the edge of the board. That's one side of our dovetail pin. Then we're going to flip the square over and you would do this for all of the pins you wanted to make. And I'm going to make it about that wide. And again, I'm going to strike a line. You could also use a marking gauge, which would be more accurate, or a marking knife, I'm sorry. So there we are set up to cut the pin for the dovetail. That's all we need. Uh, we will go over to the scroll saw and I'll show you the, the trickiest part of this and then we'll come back to the workbench and we'll set up our tail piece and uh, we'll cut that also. We need the pin to be cut first before we can mark for the tail. So I'll meet you over at the scroll saw. Here at the scroll saw and the first two cuts we need to make on the end of this board, the pin board, need to come in at an angle like this to make our pin. And the way we're going to set that angle is we're just going to set the tilt of the scroll saw to 15 degrees. Now in this case I'm on a jet scroll saw so it's a tilting head. Uh, yours may be a tilting table but it's the same thing. We need to be able to tilt the table 15 degrees to the right and 15 degrees to the left to make these two cuts. Uh, so to do that you could either use the protractor behind the blade or in this case I'm going to use my Wixie angle gauge to set the 15 degrees. So I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to turn on my angle gauge and zero it out. And I can zero this out because I've already uh, set the blade 90 degrees to the table. So you do want to do that first. That way your zero is accurate. If you're using the protractor, of course, it doesn't really matter. So with that, I'm going to loosen up. And I'm going to first 
tilt it to the right 15 degrees. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to custom cut the tail to fit the pin anyway. So as long as we're within, you know, pretty close, we're going to be okay. This gauge is getting hard to read. It's getting so dirty. Okay, there's 15 right there. I'm going to lock it down. We're going to make our first cut on the pin board on the right side of the tail. So in other words, we've got our two marks for our tails. We're going to put our scroll saw blade on this mark and we're going to cut in. And obviously because the blade is tilted, we're going to get that beveled cut on the end of our board. You do need to cut these fairly straight. So you do have to take your time and be accurate. And this is where practice comes in. Uh, if you mess up, you're just going to have to keep practicing until you learn to cut this pretty straight. And we can use a chisel when we get done to uh, uh, fine cut these dovetails, which is typically what's done on, ha on hand cut dovetails anyway. So it's not like it's cheating. So let's get in here and make this first cut. And you can see I'm really taking my time. And I'm going to make this cut up to the line that we struck across the board and stop. Right there. And I'm going to stop and back it out. Okay? The next cut we have to make on this side, obviously the blade has to be 15 degrees tilted the other direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it actually back to 90 first rather than trust the gauge to take me back where I need to be. I'm going to go back to 90. Let me, uh, and then we'll do our opposite 15 degrees. So I'm going to use my protractor right now to get myself back square. That's square. Now I can come back with my angle gauge or just continue to use the protractor if you like. So I'm going to zero myself out. Now I'm going to do the 15 degrees in the opposite direction. And obviously you could customize these settings to your liking. Uh, if you like thin dovetail joints, you could obviously do that also just by changing the angle. Now we're going to make the second cut and the second cut will be the same come into the line we struck and stop. Again, trying to remain fairly accurate to the line. the line and stop back it back out now if you look at this board we have our pin detailed here uh, but we've got all this waste material all this and this is waste this is waste 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 and waste so we need to get rid of that the easiest way to do that is a two-step process the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the blade back to 90 degrees because all the remaining cuts from now on will, the saw will be at 90 degrees. The board won't necessarily be, but the saw will be at 90 degrees. So let's get it set back up accurately to 90 degrees. And again, I'm using my protractor to get everything nice and squared up. I'm doing that to get the uh, upper arm to its highest position. That's why I'm bouncing it. Okay, let's see. I'm going to get this as accurate as I can. And there's different methods for squaring up the blade, but just for the sake of this, this uh, project, we'll just do the uh, protractor way. So now we're back at 90 degrees, and we know we need to move this, remove this waste. The problem is if we come in and cut to this line right here that we, that we did, then we're going to cut into our pin. So what we have to do is cut on the wide end of the pin right here at the top. We need to cut into right where that is and right where that is, which would obviously leave us a wedge. So 
with the scroll saw back to 90 degrees, I'm going to follow those same two lines we cut, and I'm actually going to cut a kerf that will go straight down like this, that when we cut this out, this piece will fall off and just leave us this little wedge. So I'm going to follow the same kerf with the saw set at 90 degrees. Again, take your time. And you can stay just to the, the outboard side of the kerf on this pin. And you can see now what we have, hopefully you can see, that we've got a kerf going this direction and a kerf going straight and it leaves this little triangular wedge. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. and come out. And now we have a waist, a waist wedge, the pin that we want to leave, the waist wedge, and more waist. So now what we're going to do, with, again with the blade at 90 degrees, we're going to cut into, and again this is very important, we're going to cut in on this line, but we need to stop at the wide side of this pin. Our pin's going in at an angle like this, this is the narrow side, we're going to cut along that line to the kerf right there. Make sure the narrow side of the pin is down. This line needs to be as straight as and accurate as you can possibly get it. I'm going to back out. The waist piece will break off, leaving the wedge piece in there. Now I'm going to do the other side and then we'll worry about the wedge after we get that done. There's our waist piece cut off. Now you can see we have our pin, a waist wedge, and a waist wedge. You could at this point stop and just go over and take your chisel and cut these off, but just to complete it on the scroll saw, uh, I'll show you how I'm going to get rid of these wedges. And it's done manually. I'm actually going to take and hold this wood at an angle against the table like this, and the angle I'm going to do is to leave this kerf from the left side of this wedge perpendicular to the table. So I'm going to hold it up, look at the side over here, I'm going to look at this side and make sure that this kerf line is straight up and down. I'm going to place the wood up against, or the blade up against the edge of this piece right here and use that as a guide to cut in and take most of this uh, wedge out of here. We may have to break it off, but this will make it easier to break off. So again, I'm going to push the wood up against the blade, bring it in while I'm watching with a good firm hold, maybe overcompensate just a little, cut into the curve, and stop. The wedge is still there, but it's generally cut away so well that we can just break it off. There's that side of our pin. Just very little amount of work with a chisel there will fix that up. Going to do the same thing on this side. You should be able to see it better because you're going to see me push the blade up against the wood. I'm going to angle the board while I hold it until this kerf line is straight up and down to the table. So hopefully my head won't get in your way here, but I need to watch a little bit. And you might see that I'm actually overcompensating a little bit because I know I can break it off as long as I get most of this cut. Close enough. Now I can come in here and break this piece off. There's our dovetail pin. 
uh, ready to mark our, uh, or there's our pin ready to mark our tail on the other board. We'll go back over to the workbench just for a minute. We'll clean this up a little bit, mark our tail board, then we'll come back and make that cut. Now, here's our demo, uh, the first one that I did. Uh, and here's the tail board and the pin board. And you can see when these go together that the wide end of the tail needs to go inset from the edge of the board. In other words, if we took this tail board right here and we made it this way and we cut that in, it would just pull right out. So what you want when you're making this uh, mark on the tail board to get this accurate is you want it to be to where when it comes out, when it goes in, this board, the pin board, can't pull out this direction. So the easiest way to do that is to take your tail board uh, and set it down. Take your pin board that you've already cut with the however many number of dovetails you have cut on it, and you're going to put it down just like this with the wide end of the pin up. Now I like to take another board, assuming you're not going to uh, cut the width of your board until you get done. If you, if you want it to be a fairly accurate on the width, I like to get these two boards lined up just by using a straight edge right here. So when you get these two lined up, what I'm going to do next is take a pen and I'm going to, or a pencil, a sharp pencil, and I'm going to mark this tail onto or I'm sorry, this pin onto the tailboard. So I'm gonna probably make this hard for you to see, but I'm gonna go in here and as accurately as I can, I'm gonna make my marks. And again, you could do this with a marking knife, which would be a little more accurate, but for the most part, I have found a good sharp mechanical pencil to be just fine. So if you can see on my tailboard now, I have marked an exact copy of this pin. And these are called hand cut because they're custom fit. So this pin needs to always line up with this tail. Okay, so if you have multiple uh, boards that you're cutting up to make a box, you wanna mark them all so you can keep them all the same. So now what we need to do is we need to go over and cut this tail out. And we're gonna, because we marked around the outside of this pin, we need to cut just inside this line. And Obviously, the more inside you get, the tighter the fit will be. And you can always go back and cut a little more or chisel a little bit out, uh, but you can't add wood back very easily. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stay well within these lines, uh, trying to get as accurate as we can, and then we'll come back and custom fit the actual tail into the, or the actual pin into the tail once we get this cut. And again, this cut's all gonna be set, this saw's gonna be set at a 90 degree cut. So let's go back over to the saw, finish the tail, and see where we're at. Here at the scroll saw, we need to cut our tail board. We've got our mark. Again, the blade has to be back to 90 degrees at this point, so make sure that's accurate with your uh, angle gauge, whatever you use. And again, we're going to stay just inside this line that we made because we know we struck the line on the outside of the pin. So let's go ahead and make these cuts. And again, be as accurate as you can. And my technique here is going to be I'm going to come in here to the stop line, I'm going to back out, come in here to the stop line, I'm going to back out, I'm going to cut, come into the middle and cut over to the other curve uh, so we can, and that'll give us a, a place to put our blade so we don't have to make a turn right there and uh, make a, uh, an opening in our final dovetail fit. Just remember, we can custom this fit, so get inside that line. And I left a a little bit of a hump right there in the line where I turned uh, the pieces I was cutting so we will have to probably fix that when we get to it.
and I was well inside the line there so I know we're going to have to work on that a little better I suspect we will now I'm going to come into the middle of the, of the tail and come back over to my curve to give me some place to put my blade so I can cut that cross cut section be accurate here get right at that tip take that waist piece get rid of it now we can bring our piece in this way we've got some place for our blade to go to make the finishing cut and again even on this piece, we want to stay inside the line. If we get a little bit on the line on this one, we do have a little bit of relief from that because we're going to sand the, uh, the pieces flush when we get done. There's that piece. Now, if you made absolutely perfect cuts, you could bring this tail over here slide it in and if it fits you have a perfect dovetail now in this case it needs a little bit of refinement uh, it's pretty flush right there it's a little proud right here uh, but as you can see that's a pretty accurate dovetail uh, in this case I might go back in and relieve this piece right here a little bit uh, just to make this pin stick a little proud of the tail so we can sand it down it's actually almost exactly flush right now but to make it perfectly flush sometimes it's easier to sand the pin down uh, so you could either do that with a chisel or come back in and very gently with the scroll saw or even some sandpaper or something but you can see we have a dovetail fit there that is just almost perfect it's almost too tight it would actually be hard to get the, the glue in there uh, to finish the joint uh, but you can see can't get much more accurate to that even if you had cut it with a, a hand saw or a dovetail saw. Okay, let's finish up this demonstration with just a couple of quick thoughts. Uh, when you, after you finish cutting your pin, it's handy to have a nice sharp chisel that you can come in and clean up these edges with just a little bit. Uh, it makes it easier to get a good nice fit. I didn't show you that during the demonstration because I actually got a little lucky and the, the cuts were pretty accurate. Uh, so I didn't have to do a whole lot of cleanup. But you can come in and clean the pin up a little bit. After you make the tail, uh, if the fit's not what you want, again, you can come in with the chisel and straighten that up a little bit. Uh, in this case, the fit is so tight that the glue would probably squeeze out as you were trying to, to uh, put this piece together. So I might come in with a chisel if I was actually going to use this piece and just relieve that just, you know, a thin shavings worth, just enough to give me a little bit of room for the glue. This is an easy case scenario because I only did one pin and one tail. Uh, of course, the more pins and tails you do, uh, the more accuracy comes into play. So leave yourself proud on all your cuts so you can come back in with your chisel and clean it up and you'll be fine. So that's how you make dovetails on a scroll saw. I hope the uh, tutorial was helpful. I'm Steve Good. We'll see you next time here at the Scroll Saw Workshop.